So, I guess we should probably talk about the other thing you're involved in with uh, with Blender S. Because we I don't think we've even really talked about Blender S that much, have we? No, I think not. Yeah. So, for anyone who's completely unaware, uh, just explain what Blender S is. Sure. So, uh, with Blender S, um, our goal is to deliver um, a stable enough art system. Um, you know, that doesn't peak all the time, um, that is immutable and declarative and atomic. So um, it allows you to define all of the packages, all of the packages you want on your system. And the AU pa- AUR packages also very strongly recommend against them on your base system. Mm-hmm. Um, so it allows you to define your own custom configuration with any desktop environment. Um, and it allows you to have a basic immutable setup um, mm-hmm. and immutable declarative setup. And you can run applications on any distribution if you want to within a container. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, our primary goal is to is to offer is to offer seamless declarative um art uh, art setup, you know. Um, so you can just use any desktop environment you want, all of that stuff. And you know, um, something by the way, um, I was I was watching the stream by the way, um, with DistroTube, uh, the stream you were on with DistroTube, and mm. um, yeah, I was watching that one um over there. You know, I mean, I remember, I remember being in the chat. Then you know, um, there was a stream on Brian's channel on YouTube, I think. Um, so you know, there, um, y'all were discussing some stuff about immutable gestures. You know, mm, mm. and one of our goals with Blender is, um, you know, to make it super customizable. So the aim is not to have it be user friendly. We want, we want to have people come to it. You know, this is supposed to be people's introduction to art and other distributions. Mm-hmm. However, we try to provide power users with a suitably configurable system, a decently configurable system, such as, you know, did you not feel, you know, the experience has been hampered by it? So, you know, this would be suitable for someone like Distrotube, you know, that wants to have their own custom setups or even someone here, you know, you know um, if you want to have your own custom setup with any venture manager you want or any job trials, all of that stuff, and you should not want to be hampered by the distribution itself. Mm-hmm. Because right now, from what I can tell, um, most immutable distributions, they only give you uh they just give you a really limited um you know a really limited amount of control over your desktop because if we take something like um Fedora Fedora Silver Pool, um they allow you to put on overlays I guess. Um mm-hmm. System D has something for that layers I guess that so they just augment over the FS and they make it easy for new users. Plus mm-hmm. they have RPM OST that allows you to install new packages, but it don't allow you to do anything outside of that, from what I can tell. Mm-hmm. And for those we use our own immutability imp- implementation. Um, so here we, we just pull the for systems. Um, in the previous release of BlenOS, BlenOS V3, um, we used to use, actually still a stable release, however, we, we, you know, we advise users to use V4, which is, which is the beta. However, it's just, it is actually, it is most stable on V2. So, you know, we just advise people to use that, mm-hmm. BlenOS V4, because it is fully declarative, a lot more declarative than VT was. Mm-hmm. And so with Blender's v- VT, we used to pull ISOs mm-hmm. using C-Sync as part of the update process. And, that, and you know, as scary as this may sound, um, you know, you don't want to download a 4GB ISO on every single update for a tiny call update. Mm-hmm. Um, um, we use C-Sync for that. So um, that would, so um, actually fork of C-Sync by Pro Bono, Hate him for what you will about the statements on Valen and all of that, all of that stuff. I mean, he has some. For good the stuff record, there. I don't, I don't yeah. hate Pro Bono. I just think that the statements are wrong and kind of funny. Um, yeah, I, I'll okay. stand by that. I don't hate. Him. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's just yeah. arguments on the internet about technology. It's not that. Serious. Yeah, maybe he doesn't like me. That's possible. Um, but for the record, I don't, I don't personally have an issue with him. Yeah, no. Yeah. On a on a more serious note though. Yeah, I mean we use uh we use Z Sync 2, um which is uh, which is developed by um Pro Bono, so that was that was a fork of Z Sync. Um mm-hmm. that was essentially a utility supposed to reduce the size of downloads. So whenever you download something, so if say you're downloading large ISOs every single day. So that just reduces, so that just downloads the deltas between the two ISOs, just the differences mm-hmm. between the two ISOs. So if so there's just a, if so there's just a new package in a new ISO, mm-hmm. um, it's really just, um, you know, the amount of, uh, you know, the amount of search that it takes to download the new ISO and the amount of time that's probably just going to be a couple of seconds because it just needs to download, 
about 10 to 20 MBs for that. You know, assuming it's just a small package, it's just going to have to download about 10 to 20 MBs for that. Mm -hmm. It isn't going to have to download a whole new ISO. And then silent ISO. So first off, we use ZSync for that. We used to use ZSync for that. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so if it just, if we use ISOs, and then um, inside the ISO, you all, most ISOs, at least most distributions, ship a, cost, a, ship a complex use for a system within the ISOs. That is QuashFS. So um, the ships quash FSS inside the ISOs, um, um, which are just which are just um, complex. You can think of them as complex huge file systems. You know, of your final install system that Calamity is ubiquity. Most installers, you know, um, that installers use, you know, to unpack your final system. You know, so uh, so we just use that and we replace your current, we replace your current system using that. So we install any packages you've declared mm -hmm. in your system configuration on top of the new which file system, mm -hmm. which is but we built from an built from an archive of the Arch Linux repos whenever the ISO was built. So you can still so that doesn't result in uh, partial upgrades. So if we just use uh, if we just use the Arch Linux archives for that, mm -hmm. and. Um, we would just uh, we would just use that, and um, we would perform TV merges, um, TV ECC merges, which you can just think of as uh, as merges where you don't just abandon your changes in ECC every time you try to update your system, mm -hmm. uh, while allowing certain changes from the new trial system to get carried on to your system. So you know, if so there was some major, if there was some sort of major breaking change in the new trial system um, that had to be made to ECC um, that you couldn't just rely on the user to make. So, you know, because what Arch does, it's, they just have, they just take the lenient suit where they just use pack new files for that. Here, yeah, um, we have, we have something, we just use TV merges for this purpose and uh, that's quite a bit better than what Arch does, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm not that familiar with Arch just right now, but yeah, I mean, they just, uh, from what I know, they just create pack new files for that purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, that aside, um, yeah, so I mean, those are, those two are main goals, um, declarative, uh, making, having a declarative system so and something immutable, atomic, um, after the June watch your system to break apart. Mm -hmm. And oh, and by the way, I'm often asked about why we decided to go with Arch, you know. Why we I was gonna ask like you that at some point. Yeah, exactly, because um here's the thing, um we ship our own custom images of Arch, you know. Um so we, we vet images before those are rolled out. Mm -hmm. Um you can always um you can always stay on the pleading uh, on the pleading edge, you know, and use um Use an Arch Linux switch file system. You can just build your own switch file system locally instead of using an ISO on an update. Using pack So if we just pack a switch file system and then install any packages and all of that stuff, and then atomically replace your current file system with a new one on the next boot. Um, but you know, for most users, we just advise sticking to the current system where you just have where we just use pre-built switch file systems that are within ISOs, which we do test and vet. And so, you know, that helps you avoid any major system leakages because we get to test everything and we get to see if there's anything major, anything broken mm -hmm. before rolling out updates. So that just removes a lot of the instabilities mm -hmm. of Arch Linux, you know, from package updates. Mm -hmm. um, which, by the way, um, this is probably going to be contrary to most users' experiences, but um, Arch is just a lot more stable for me compared to other distributions, especially okay. when compared to Ubuntu or major package updates. It's just more stable for me. I and think, I have had. I, I think the only yeah. issues that I've personally had are like key related issues. You know, someone loses a key and they're like, oh, we've got to push out like a, a mirror, uh, the, a key list upgrade, and you've got to upgrade the key yeah. list before you upgrade the rest of it. I don't think I've ever actually had a package. I, I, yeah, I don't think I've had a package breakage that wasn't. People weren't very, very quickly aware of. 